podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24 7. Hey folks, welcome to another week here on Ring Around the Rosie. I'm your host, Kim Brown, a.k.a. Platinum Rose Lady, uh, saying good evening to you on Wednesday, June 20th, 2018, with uh, the WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view in the rearview mirror. Uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, obviously, the big thing to talk about today, the big thing that everyone was kind of like, what? Was the fact that... Um, we found out yesterday that um, Big Cass was fired from the WWE. They put it up on their webpage with a lot of people noticing that the usual thing wasn't done, i.e. the wishing him best of luck in future endeavors, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's been a lot of speculation about why Cass was let go. Um there have been some rumors um, to do with off time, you know, um, some behavior that they didn't really like involving being, you know, intoxicated in public. Rumors, like I said. Um, there was also an incident apparently on the tour bus over in Brit- uh, over in Europe when um, Cass wound up in the bathroom of the bus and couldn't get the door open because there was a, there was a problem with the lock and he is apparently claustrophobic and being a tall guy in a small in a small enclosed space like a bus bathroom I can understand that and he broke the bathroom door to get out which apparently pissed a lot of people off um there's other rumors swirling around. Nobody really seems to know for sure, as of the time I'm recording this, what actually caused the problem. Um, but the the um, end result was that Big Cass is out of the WWE. Um, where he's going to show up next, I don't know. I mean, obviously, a lot of people are thinking he's going to turn up in TNA. Um, maybe. I don't know or Impact, or whatever they're calling it now, because goodness knows I can't remember what they call it anymore. I also have some sad news to report. It was announced by a young man named Jesse White, who is the son of Leon White, a.k.a. Big Van Vader. Uh, Jesse uh, posted that um, his father passed away on June 18th uh, due to complications from pneumonia. It's... um. That's really a bummer because um, I remember watching Vader during a lot of his feuds in WCW and in the WWE, and he was um, he was really intimidating. He was a big, scary dude, but for being a big man, he could definitely move. Um, the first place I remember hearing and seeing him was actually in. Um, in the AWA out in the Minnesota area. We actually got that on cable for a while. And uh, he was, they called him the, um, Leon the Baby Bull White back then. He was, he hadn't adopted the the big Van Vader gimmick yet. Um, he was very, very much a beloved athlete overseas. Uh, as I mentioned, he worked for WCW. He was a heavyweight champion there. He was a heavyweight champion in IWGP. Uh, he appeared on the ABC sitcom Boy Meets World. And, you know, he was somebody's dad and somebody's husband and somebody's friend. You know, he, and, and that's, that's the thing you have to remember when you read about when somebody passes away. You know, that, we know the person that we see on stage. That's that's the person that's in the spotlight. The person that's away from the spotlight, you know, that's somebody's spouse. That's somebody's parent. That's somebody's next door neighbor. You know, that's somebody's fishing buddy. And they have, a, you know, they've, they've lost someone close to them. We feel like we've lost someone close to us because they were in our living rooms every week for a long time. But, um, you know, this person was in their hearts. So, 
Um, I would like to uh, extend my condolences to the family of um, Leon White. And um, I know he was suffering from a lot of health issues the last couple of years. And I am glad that he has found peace. Um, I'm sorry that he's left this plane of existence, but hopefully he has found peace in the next world. And um, that he is out of pain. Obviously, that is a good thing, but he's definitely going to be missed by his family and friends and fans. So um, rest in peace and give him hell and heaven, Leon. Um, also, um, before I actually talk about the pay-per-view and the results and all that, I would like to talk about an incident that was reported after the pay-per-view. And this really, really pissed me off. There were reports after the pay-per-view that when people were, you know, leaving and there are fans outside, you know, trying to catch a glimpse of people, a high five, say goodbye, say they love them, whatever they want to do. Um, Paige was being driven out of the arena, out of the building, and she was giving high fives to the fans. She had her window down enough to give people high fives and stuff like that. And some fucking jerk took it upon themselves to pie face her and tell her that she needed to lose some weight. Um, as of right now, I don't believe that person has been identified yet. I haven't seen anything to that effect as, as I'm recording this. Um, to whoever, to whomever you are, you're an asshole. You are a complete and utter jerk. First of all, you might think that you are being really funny by pie-facing somebody. Now, if you don't know what pie-facing means, I don't mean he literally hit her in the face with a pie. Pie-facing is when you take your hand and push it in someone's face and violently push them back, like you're hitting them with a pie, but there's no pie there, it's just your hand. You can hurt somebody doing that, besides the fact that it's just a complete and utter dick thing to do. Now, to add on to the fact that whoever this person is is a complete and utter fuckwad, they decided to also tell Paige that she needed to lose some weight. Fuck you. Whoever you are, fuck you. You don't get to tell somebody that. You don't get to say that to somebody. That is a really shit thing to say to somebody. Because the thing is, that person can look however they want, and if they're comfortable with the way they look, you have no fucking right to tell them to lose weight. Although I will say one thing. That person, whomever they are, they should conceivably, be able to lose weight. You, whoever you are, will continue to be a complete and utter fuckhead. And as far as I know, medical science has not yet provided a cure for that. Um, so thanks a lot, anonymous fan, whoever you are that felt like they had to ruin, you know, the whole wrestler leaving and getting high fives and positive feedback from the audience by being a complete and utter shit. Thanks a lot. So, let's get to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view itself, coming from Chicago, Illinois, which we learned more than once during the show. Uh, first match of the evening was Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass, which I was really like, what the... Uh, this is first. Daniel Bryan is in the opening match of a pay-per-view, and the crowd is not screaming and hollering about that. Okay, I was a little bit like, all right. Um... While the match is going on, the CM Punk chant starts from the Chicago crowd. Stay classy, Chicago. Uh, the match ends with uh, Daniel Bryan winning over Big Cass via submission in what, what was really not a very long match at all. Um, after that, we had a uh, segment between the New Day and Kevin Owens, with Kevin Owens sucking up to the New Day, trying to get them to be on his side when it comes to targeting uh, Braun Strowman in the Money in the Bank match, offering them maple syrup for their pancakes. That sounded a lot dirtier than I intended it to. I'm sorry. Um... Next up was Sammy, L- Sammy Zayn versus Bobby Lashley, with Bobby Lashley winning via pinfall. Uh, Sammy Zayn, it has been reported, has been injured, which obviously is not a good thing. So we hope he gets well soon. Um, we have Elias in the ring doing his whole thing that he does. Ugh. 
Yeah. Following that, we have Seth Rollins, the Intercontinental Champion, putting his belt on the line against Elias. Uh, Seth winning by pinfall and a handful of Elias's belt, which nobody in the crowd seemed to have the slightest bit of problem with. Um, okay. Um, there was a sign in the crowd that I thought was quite interesting and nice. Um, the little kid that had a sign that said he was seven years old. Happy birthday, little seven-year-old person from Chicago. I hope you had a very nice day. The next match was the women's ladder match for the Money in the Bank briefcase with uh, Charlotte Flair versus Naomi versus Alexa Bliss versus Ember Moon versus Natalia versus Lana versus Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. <sighs> I, I am now seeing stars. I'm really, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Um, winner of the uh, match and the Money in the Bank briefcase was Alexa Bliss. Ugh. Pardon me while I eye roll. Um, Baron Corbin, who is now uh, Stephanie McMahon's little bitch, um, is trying to, um, we he see him in the back trying to, um, basically trying to intimidate Paige, the, the GM of SmackDown, and she's not having any of it, and basically tells him to fuck off. Good for her. Uh, the next match was Roman Reigns versus Jinder Mahal, who was comp- accompanied to ringside by Sunil Singh, who was in a wheelchair and a cast and, you know, and, and the neck brace and the whole thing. And who, did he need any of that? Is that, do I really need to ask that question? No, of course not, because during the match he attacked Roman with Corey Graves screaming, it's a miracle. No, a miracle, Corey, would be that if you actually said something that didn't make me want to throw up. That would be a miracle. Um, Roman winds up winning the match via pinfall, and the crowd actually seemed to be kind of warming up to Roman, so apparently there are some people in Chicago who get it. I don't know, whatever. Um... We had a profile of one of the uh, people who is in the Special Olympics, the uh, an athlete by the name of Katie Miller, who was also at the pay per view and got a very nice you know chant from the fans, and that's really awesome. Good luck to Katie in the upcoming Special Olympics. Um, we had a review of the kickoff show and also what happened earlier on in the show. Um, Carmel. The next match was Carmella going against Asuka. And Carmella winds up winning via pinfall because all of a sudden there's someone standing there during the match in Asuka's outfit. And as it turned out, it was James Ellsworth. So um, so apparently someone was wearing Asuka's outfit that had no balls. And it wasn't Asuka. So, uh, so James Ellworth, Ellsworth is back and with Carmella. <sighs> Yay. I think my faith in humanity just slipped down a few more notches. Um, and at this point in the, in the, in the proceedings, I did have a bit of an epiphany that I seem to have. It's, it's, it's an ongoing epiphany. I don't know if that's possible, but fuck it. Um, the epiphany being that I really wish someone would slap the living shit out of Corey Graves. I mean, just somebody, anybody. I don't care who. You could be Renee Young for all I care right now. I just, Fucking can't stand whenever he opens his mouth, and I really wish somebody would just punch him in the face repeatedly. That would make me very, very happy. Uh, the last man standing match was next uh, for the world championship with AJ Styles going against uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, the winner of the match, the last man standing, was AJ Styles. Following this, we have the I can't fucking stand you fucking writers fuck you portion of the evening, uh, which was Ronda Rousey going against Nia Jax, Nia being the Raw Women's Champion. Um, the winner of the match was Nia Jax by disqualification. Now, the reason that Ronda got disqualified is because um, Alexa Bliss interfered and Ron, it, the referee ruled that it was in Ronda's favor, so the match was given to Nia via disqualification. Alexa then cashed in her Money in the Bank briefcase and went after Nia, who had obviously been fighting a hella battle against Ronda Rousey, and 
Alexa Bliss is now the uh, Raw Women's Champion, and I hate everything. <laughs> I just hate everything because I hate Alexa Bliss because I think she's a fucking bitch. I actually think she's something more than a bitch, but I really don't want to use that word because, you know, it's, I, I would like to re- retain a little decorum. She's a total umbrage. For those of you who get that reference, you know what I mean. Um, the final match of the evening was the men's ladder match for the Money in the Bank briefcase with Braun Strowman versus Finn Balor versus The Miz versus Rusev versus Bobby Roode versus Kevin Owens versus Kofi Kingston. The New Day finally decided who was going to actually be in the match versus Samoa Joe. And if you couldn't see the winner of this coming a mile away, you haven't been paying much attention. Uh, the winner of the Money in the Bank briefcase was Braun Strowman. Uh, which brings us to the next evening, uh, which was obviously Raw. And Raw started off with, uh, a bit of a, you know, um, Ronda Rousey came out during Alexa Bliss's gloat fest about um, how she won the belt. And she wound up beating the living shit out of Ron- uh, Ronda wound up beating the living shit out of Alexa and Kurt Angle and a shit ton of referees. Um, the end result being that um, Ronda is now suspended for 30 days, but not before she drove Alexa through a table and I needed to go and um, paint my nails. Put it that way. Um, following that, we had a, an Intercontinental Championship match with uh, champion Seth Rollins going against Dolph Ziggler. Um, with Dolph winning by cheating and uh, grabbing the tights. So now the new Intercontinental, Intercontinental Champion is Dolph Ziggler, and this night's just started off as shit. Um, following that, we had Bobby Roode going against Kurt Hawkins, um, and uh, Bobby Roode winning that match to the surprise of, I think, nobody. Um, except maybe, like, someone who's never watched the WWE before, ever. Um, a tag team Bout was next with the tag team champions, uh, Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. I'm a face, trust me. Um, going against um, Heath Slater and Rhino. I don't really know why, but uh, before the match actually happened, we had uh, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel um, doing the whole I'm dressing up as somebody else just to be annoying trick with them dressing up as Matt and Bray, and it wasn't funny. It was kind of stupid. Um, Big surprise. Um, The match was won at the end of all... At the end of it all, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt kept the uh, tag team belts again, see, to the surprise of absolutely no one. Uh, Jinder Mahal had a match against Chad Gable, which um, I'm not really sure... We know who this, who benefited from this. I don't really know. Certainly not Chad since he wound up losing to gender. Um, Following that, we had a ladies tag team match with the Riot Squad going against uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey. Um, This feud has apparently completely fallen, you know, their friendship has completely fallen apart. Um, the Riot Squad winning the match, uh, Sasha and Bailey basically being like, we're not friends anymore, and Sasha driving off in a huff in her ring gear, because no one's gonna pull you over dressed like that. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, following that, we had, um, Roman Reigns teamed up with Bobby Lashley. Okay. Um, I mean, I've had dreams like that, but I was like, somebody's been inside my head. Uh, going against the revival. Um, and Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley worked as a well-oiled unit and everybody went home happy. Yeah, no, that, that didn't happen. Um, a lot of tagging themselves in kind of stuff going on with Bobby Lashley winding up tagging himself in 
to score the pinfall. And then leaving, there was no like, hey, great match partner or anything like that. No, it was just basically a lot of underscored hostility and posturing. Um, Elias comes out and starts, you know, doing his whole shtick again. And I'm just like, oh gosh, why won't you go away? Um, following that was a match with, uh, No Way Jose going against, and I actually should say, No Way Jose and his entourage, the No Way Jose dancers, I don't know what else to call them, uh, going against, well, just Mojo. Uh, I'm sorry, j- uh, just Jose going against Mojo Raleigh with Mojo Raleigh picking up the win. Um, the main event for the evening was um, Kevin Owens and Baron Corbin, now with a completely shaved head, all right, uh, d- going against uh, Braun Strowman and Finn Balor, who are, you know, in kind of, they've been kind of like, it's like, okay, we're, we're sort of friends, and then we're not sort of friends, but we might be friends, but now it seems like they're friends again. Or they just both hate Kevin and Baron, which is really kind of possible, because they're both dicks. Um, and if, you know, and I'm sorry that I know that wasn't very nice, but, you know, I don't care. Um, the, the match ended with, um, uh, Unfortunately, Kevin Owens and Baron Corbin winning over Braun and Finn, which I was like, all right, that, um, okay. So we had that going for us. Um, over on SmackDown the next evening, uh, we have, uh, Carmella out there shooting off her mouth and James Elworth kissing her ass. With Carmella talking about all the women that she's greater than, you know, talking about all these wrestlers that she's greater than, talking about um, Mother Teresa being greater than Mother Teresa, who is now Saint Mother Teresa, you ignorant... And I'm not going to finish that. Um, Asuka came out and, you know, basically started kicking asses, which is what she does, because, of course, Ellsworth tried to stare Asuka down, which is... Stupid, but look who we're talking about. But because she was too busy pounding on that little weasel, uh, Carmella got in a cheap shot because that's what Carmella does is cheap shot because she's a bitch. Following that, we had, uh, Becky Lynch going against Billy Kay, um, before the match with Billy Kay and Peyton Royce shooting off their fucking mouths again. You know, and, you know, it, it's really interesting because they, these two are from Australia. And Australia is a beautiful place who must be very glad to be rid of these two. But one thing that Australia is also full of is deadly, poisonous, venom-filled animals. You're missing two of them, Australia. And uh, for all of their yakking... um Becky Lynch wound up winning the match, uh, defeating Billy Kay with the disarm her. So she could actually use her voice for something useful for a change and tap out. And there was much rejoicing. The next thing that happened was a little bit less fun. Um, in the fact that we had the debut of Sanity, spelled capital S, capital A, small N, small I, small T, Y. Don't ask me why. Um, Sanity, for those of you who don't know, is made up of uh, Eric Young, Killian Dane, and Alexander Wolf. Three people who look like... Um, gosh, I don't know how to say this and not sound really, really, really mean. Um, they look like people the Wyatt family wouldn't hang out with. I mean, just... Sorry. There it is. Um, they wound up attacking Jimmy and Jay Uso, and this looks like it's going to be a hell of an awesome feud. Um, in a repeat of the pre-show for Money in the Bank, we had the Bludgeon Brothers, who are the tag team champions on SmackDown, uh, once again going against Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson with, unfortunately, the same results of um, Gallows and Anderson being beaten by the Bludgeon Brothers. Um, There was a five-man gauntlet match um, held to see who was going to be the challenger for AJ Styles at the next 
pay per view. It's actually, I think it's a web purview. Um, WWE Extreme Rules. Um, the people involved in the match were uh, Rusev, The Miz, Daniel Bryan, Samoa Joe, and Big E. And the winner of the match being Rusev, who had a confrontation with AJ Styles afterwards that started politely but didn't stay there, at least as far as Aiden Smith is concerned, with AJ Styles striking a blow for music lovers any, everywhere and popping Aiden, Aiden English one. So um, that brings us to the end of SmackDown. Um, I'm sorry, I hate to do this. I mean, it seems like I'm a broken record about it, but once again, SmackDown just had it all over Raw. It just... It just does. It's just a better show. It's got better people. It's got better writers. And I, you know, I, I get so tired of hearing people refer to it as the B show because it's not. Um, but that's just my opinion for what it's worth. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the show this week. I'm sorry if it comes off like it was a little shorter than normal. Um, if you would like to uh, comment or say anything about my show, PlatinumRosel at Yahoo.com. You can follow me on Twitter at uh, PlatinumRoseLady at Twitter.com if you're so inclined. And if you'd like to listen to the other shows that I am involved with and are part of our little Island of Misfit Toys, uh, you can listen to Subject Cinema with me and TC over at SubjectCinema.com. It's our movie podcast. Uh, also, um, we have another show called Front Row 5 and 10, which is our list show, which is a lot of fun, and I hope you'll check that out as well. Uh, TC has a couple of solo shows, Catastrophe Vortex, which is his disaster movie uh, podcast, and two smaller shows, um, uh, Three Minute Weekend and Tuesday Digidex, which are shows that you can listen to, and um, he, that's where he talks about new movies coming out, and you can check them out there. Um, I, I also, I forgot to mention Platinum Roses Garden, which is my other solo show, which is my Supernatural podcast. I hope you will check that out as well. Uh, other members of our little family include, uh, Anthony Lamberti at Nerd Grotto and also, um, Cave Babble with Eric and Valerie Lyon and our dramatic piece, Manhattan Hammerdown as it happened, which was done in conjuncture with the, um, the release um, it's the 10 year anniversary of the release of J.J. Abrams movie Cloverfield. It is a dramatic production that all of us were involved with. Um, and it's really good. I think it's, I, if I do say so myself, it's a labor of love and I hope you guys will check that out as well. And, uh, that is going to do it for me for this week on uh, Ring Around the Rosie. This is Kim Brown signing off for another week and I hope you come back next week for my next show. podcasting's choice from coast to coast continent to continent right here 24 7 the